everybody goes through highs and lows in their lives. And for people to see me come out of this on top of it and make something better of myself, you know, I, I just hope that transpires into somebody else taking on that same mentality that when they're in a low point in their life, when they feel like giving up, when they feel like everything's crashing down on them, when they see no light at the end of the road, that they're going to be able to look at me and be like, yo, Jeremy went through this and look where he's at right now. Flex Lewis, you're straight out the left. Today's guest is the most decorated men's physique champion in history. The four-time Olympia champion has seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. In this podcast, he humbly opens up about his faults and how having a family has changed the trajectory in life. The mindset he's developed since the last time on stage isn't the one he has going forward, and I certainly see the changes, and I'm excited for the world to witness them also. This is a podcast with Jeremy Bendia. Matt, welcome to Straight Out the Lair. We are live. Awesome, man. It's great to have you. Thank you for back here me. at the gym. Yeah, of course. Great surprise to see you walking in last night. I was like, brother, bro, what the fuck? I know, text I, me. I'm sorry I didn't text you, man. I know you've it's, been busy. I saw, I've been watching the Instagram and seeing how people come, come in and out. Yeah, but you know how it goes. I might not be able to see the, the phone go off right there and then, but I'll, I'll always I'll always get back to you, mate. Yeah, you're you know? always good about yeah, that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, you got one guy in the show. I want to just hit that off right away. This is the, I know this is going to, episode's going to air later on, um, but this is the weekend of the Olympia. You brought your athlete in, athlete in last night. <sighs> he looks fucking incredible, bro. Thank you. I can see so much of of him in you, or you in him. That's it, you in him. Yeah, we've got <sighs> a lot of similarities, and that's that's one of the reasons why we, I started coaching him. I met him back in the Philippines back in 2017. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, he won a regional overall that show and i was out there with ebogen at the time and we were uh, sponsoring the event yep. and um you know I, I, I saw the talent and i also saw the circumstances a lot of these athletes are going through out there and you know the lack of opportunities the lack of financial support all those things and um i saw the talent in this this young athlete and um you know i, I told him what i thought he was capable of doing and uh you know i i offered to coach him and I, I wanted to help him genuinely, and um, it's been a it's been a process. And I believed in, in this guy since the very beginning, and I told him in 2017 that I thought he had the potential to be up on stage with me or on the Olympia stage Damn. as an amateur. Wow! And um, you know, we made it happen. 2018, he turned pro right before my last Olympia, and then um, you know, here we are in 2022 at the Mr. Olympia, and he's getting on stage for the first time. How crazy is that? It's like yeah. you're kind of passing the torch. Yeah, it amazing. Is. Yeah, I, I didn't get the chance to obviously um, see you guys train, but I, I mean, shit, the, the whole social media around the gym the last couple of days has been bananas, and then I get to see your guy then yep. popping up in the feed and pausing and stuff. I was like, geez, Louise. But the fact that you have, well, you had a show. I don't know if you still do in the Philippines. Do you still have your show? I don't have a show, no. Did you, it, did it, you have it, one at point no, in time? No, it was Sean Roden's show. All right, okay. But I know you were going back and forth, right? Yeah, I was, we Obviously, were doing you got connections. Lot, yeah, I was doing business with when I was with Eva Jen. We were doing a lot of business out there. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, so it's it's um it's been a I love the Philippines. It's fun. That's my where my roots are from. Yeah. my grandfather's from the Philippines. So um, having an opportunity to go out there and is it means a lot to myself, and my family. I was actually able to bring my dad to the Philippines with me uh, for the first time. He's never been. Are you kidding me? So I got wow. to bring him back to the hometown where his father yeah. was born. Uh, we went to the church that his father went to. So it was just yeah. you know a blessing to be able to do that for my dad because I don't think he would have ever had that opportunity to go back and, and see the homeland. And that's what bodybuilding, or the fitness industry, has been able to do. And you know, and, and now you've been able to. You know, pass back to your parents. I do the same thing for me. You know, give them opportunities they never were able to um, live through. But now, you know, whether or not they're in the stage of life, you know, uh, as we are the the kids, we want to give back as much as we can. So to to take your dad back to his, you know, homelands, his parents' homelands, and and to see things that he's never would never be able to see. It's fucking incredible, bro. Yeah, that's that's great to you, man. It's a special I love moment. that. There's memories that we'll, we'll we'll cherish forever, definitely. Yeah. And how long do you stay there with your dad? Dad and I were there for like 10 days. It was back, I took him back in 2015. It was actually yeah. my very first trip to the Philippines. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I've been back several times since then. I yeah. haven't been since 2018, but hopefully this upcoming year we'll have some trips out there, especially now that I'm working closer with Joven and, and he should be doing well at this Fuck. Olympia this coming Saturday. Yeah. So hopefully a lot more is to come. Incredible, man. I, I, that's what I love about you too, is like these, these small, small stories. People want to, mm. you know, know you for maybe the accolades, right? But it's all the unseen things. Maybe if... 
you know, if you decide to post them or not, that's one thing. But yeah. a lot of things you do that you might just talk to me about, and I've heard, you know, in passing over the years, I don't think you have promoted them. And if you have, you, you kind of haven't pushed them hard enough. And again, this is the small things that I like about you is like the giving back aspect of things, right? Um, now, where where we are right now in life and how, when we met to to where we are currently today, both dads, yeah. life has changed tremendously for us both. Um, I look at some of these trophies and I'm sure you look at yours and, and where we have been in different parts of our lives and how driven we've been and not the guys we are now. It doesn't mean to say we're not driven. It's a different kind of drive, right? How much, um, how much did having your child change your life? My life took a, a complete 180 when my daughter was born. And it happened almost instantaneously, you know, like, you know, have my wife pregnant, you know, all the way up, you, you know, you start preparing yourself a little bit, but you can't really prepare for something like mm-hmm. that until they're here, you know, then you're, you're a father, you have a responsibility for another human life and my baby girl, like, you know, before I was married, before I had my daughter, you know, I, I prioritized myself, I put myself first a lot and um, that changed real quick, you know, and now every, everything I do, all my actions, all my, you know, even my thoughts, everything I'm trying to do is, is, is gen- it's directed towards my family and trying to bring a better life to them. And I don't just represent myself anymore. I'm representing my family. Yeah, so, so well, I want to also point out that incredible fucking dad, bro. You are, I, I've seen, you know, um, people will put a good show on for social media, right? But you're a bloody good dad, you know. And um, I've seen the change, walk, talk, act uh, since the birth of your daughter. And, um, I mean, listen, man, I, I, I wish you, and I've always wished you were the very best, but when, when people get to a certain standard in, in any sport, and we've got friends in many different sports, right? You just have to have the mentality to be the best. You have to. It's got to be a selfish world. It's a very lonely world. And sometimes your actions, when you're in that fucking driven spot, focused spot, maybe... <sighs> And not the best. Maybe you're so focused you don't see things go in because you're matrix style, right? You just focus on this end goal. And um, when l- a lot of life changes happen, you realize like, holy shit, I could have handled this situation better. I could have done things better along the line. I could have enjoyed my championship a little bit better. It's a multitude of different things. People might s- just pigeon pigeonhole you to, to one incident or whatever else. But um, when you were the champion, you walked, talked, with classmate, I used to work, we, we were the champions at the same time together. We traveled the world together. I would look over, I have my fucking two hour line. You would have your two hour line, whatever else. We, we were the first guys there, the last guys to leave. Um, and it takes, again, a, a very controlled mindset to talk to your fans, engage with your fans. Um, and that whole process is very like taxing, very strenuous. A lot of people don't understand that, the stress that comes along with being the champion. Um, and you wear it as a badge of honor too. Being the best is something that you and I wanted to be the first time we, we, we stepped on stage, whatever that was, right? We've, we've been driven to be the best. And um, when you get a little taste of success, you get more and more and more and more focused. I want to know about your mindset, and I still want to talk about everything that's going on, right? That mindset to be the best, was that something that was with you from a very, very young age? Yeah. My dad instilled that from a very young age. You know, I've been playing sports since I was four or five years old. My dad, he's coached me the whole time. Not necessarily been my actual coach of my team. He yeah. never wanted to coach my team because he wanted to focus on me. And that was something that was different between myself and my brother. My brother, my dad coached all of my brother's teams, and he had to you know, allocate his energy and time to all the other athletes. Yeah. When, my brother's seven years older than me. Okay. So when it was my time to come around and play, my dad realized that he wanted to put his effort into me and you know he was the type of dad that would he worked a sales job and he'd travel from all over the state he'd leave in the morning fly to texas or wherever do a meeting and he'd fly back home in time to take me to football practice or baseball practice you know he hit me ground balls every single day he put me through drills in the off season you know leading up into football season we lived in northern california it gets 110 115 degrees uh tryouts would start in like August for football, he'd have me running in May, running up the hill. I'd be like, why am I running? I'm 10 years old. Yeah. He's like, because when conditioning comes, everybody's going to start trying to get in shape. You're already going to be in shape. Yeah. You got to stand out. 
Yeah. So it's just a mentality that my dad instilled for me is to, to if you're going to do something, do it at the best ability, outperform everybody because we're capable of doing it if you put the work in. And be ready for the sound of it, right? Yeah. So, so that was at 10 years old? I mean, earlier than that. I mean, wow. I remember my dad, I was out running my brother at six. Oh, wow. I mean, we lived on this big hill. It was like yeah. a 300 yard hill. <laughs> And I remember getting up in the morning. I couldn't go play at my friends until we ran 10 wind sprints up that thing. Oh, damn. Yeah. It was, it was, it, my dad was like, he was a drill sergeant for, with, towards us and in our yeah. sports. And, you know, um, I think I, that's what, one of the best things that he could have done for me because it drove me to, to be a certain way and have mm. a certain mentality. Even leading up in my youth football days, you know, um, I was always the defensive captain on my team. I played middle linebacker. And my dad always, made a point to make sure I took an initiative to take a leadership role. Mm. You know, he wanted me to be able to step up and speak in front of the team and, and help, you know, instruct, construct, constructive criticism, which could have, I was good and bad at, but um, he always wanted me to take that leadership role. And I was never afraid to. You know, mm. I would get up in a practice and I would talk in front of my team at eight, nine, ten years old. Jesus. And a lot of the kids didn't like that. They're like, this, you know, yeah. you're just an ass kisser, you know, trying yeah. to brown nose the coach. But no, it was a mentality because I wanted to, I wanted to win. Mm. And I had a certain, um, I, I knew what it took to win. I knew the focus that it took. Even in high school football, I played linebacker and all of our linebacker and core, we were really good, but they dicked around during practice. Mm. And I remember just getting on their ass all the time. And it wasn't until like a few years ago, <laughs> You know, I come back, I moved back up to Northern California and I saw some of these guys and they're like, hey man, I know I gave you a hard time in high school, you know, and I just, I see why you did it. Mm. You know, I understand your mentality and why you pushed everybody so hard. So he goes, you know, I'm sorry for giving you a dick, but I respect what you did. And it was cool yeah. to hear that from people because, you know, I got a lot of heat in high school. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's funny because my life, you know, as far as my social life, it's kind of like been the same. Ever since I was young, leading up into my adulthood, up until recently, you know, I just, I've never had the best social skills in regards to my peers, but, you know, as far as being successful and being able to lead, I, I feel I've done a good job of doing that. I want to talk about that. You said something, you didn't have the, the best skills. In what sense? Uh, just being able to um, communicate my feelings or being able to enter, I don't know. I don't know how to really explain it. Um, I was never really the cool popular kid, but I was always well known. Mm. You know, everybody knew who Jeremy was, but I wasn't necessarily like in the cool group. I kind of floated around. I was friends with different people from different groups. I didn't mm. just stick to one niche group. I didn't try to, you know, hang out with the cool kids or the popular kids. That wasn't my thing. I didn't want to, I wasn't there to impress anybody. I yeah. was there to focus. I was there to be, be to be the best and I was there to win, yeah. whether it was in the classroom or it was in, on the football field or baseball field. To so academic too. Yeah. I got an academic scholarship out of, out of high school to play football. Um, but I ended up injuring my neck my senior year, and I ended up going to UC Davis and studying um, biology for a year before I started bodybuilding. Yeah, I know about that injury. So that injury itself, uh, what happened there? It was my senior year in high school. I was a 170-pound middle linebacker. We were playing against um, a team that had a 280-pound D1 center. <sighs> So the, I wasn't scared of anybody. I'd hit anybody in the mouth. So this guy, he came same, out. Same, same. Yeah, it hasn't changed. I mean, they, 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 ran, they ran a dive play. The center came out on me, and yeah. you know, I, I stuffed him right back in the hole. But you know, I had my head snapped back. You know, I heard he had a disc in my neck. And I remember the one thing my dad told me is, don't ever go down on a football field. Never stop the game. I don't care if you break your leg. Damn. You better crawl off the field. Don't stop yeah. the game. He goes, don't embarrass me like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we actually had the game film. I yeah. hit the guy and I'm running out the field, my arms dangling. And um, after that, I kind of like it, it put a hindrance on my, my football career. You know, I, I finished the season, but I didn't practice the rest of my senior year. Didn't do any contact before the games on Friday night. Thursday, I'd go and get a cortisone injection in my neck and lower back. I'd play the game Fucking all day God. Saturday. I'd be back in physical therapy, getting massage work done. And it was just, that was the process, you know, we were, and getting worse too. Yeah, it was getting worse. You know, we were banking on a football scholarship. My brother mm. is six foot. He was, you know, 230 pounds as a senior in high school. Jesus. I'm, I'm still waiting for my growth spurt. It's coming. <laughs> so it's it. coming, man. I swear. It's, it's, it's coming. So Inversion table, I've been told. <laughs> so, I mean, I, that was, you know, I put a lot of effort in, uh, into football in, in, in high school. And, you know, with that, my dad was always on top of my grades, too, making sure, you know, I was... 4.0 was a standard for my dad. And I yeah. always fell a little short. I would always get like a B in math, but it was always very, 3.875 was my final GPA in high school. I graduated top 2% of my high school class. Um, I got into the UC system in California. So it was just, it was, a, it was a process of, you know, just 
staying disciplined and um, trying to be my best in all aspects. And, you know, it led me to you know, bodybuilding and where I'm at. And that's why I ended up actually leaving college is because I was tired of being a broke college student. I didn't mm. like my parents taking care of me. I wanted mm. to be able to take care of myself. I went to college at 17 also. Mm. I was young. I left home at 17. Damn. And, um, you know, I was living off of very little money, going to school full time at UC Davis, studying biology. And it wasn't what I wanted to do at the time. I had already done started bodybuilding. That's okay. what my passion, my love was. So I ended up leaving school, started a personal training business at 18 and uh, started picking up my, my bodybuilding career. Mm. And uh, it took off. You know, I, I did really well for myself as a trainer in Northern California up until I was like 22. And that's when I got into, I turned pro and then went to Olympia. And then the online business started taking off for me and the coaching and, and expanded out. And once social media started taking that big hit in bodybuilding, you know, <clears throat> it skyrocketed. Yeah. Aligning with Hani Rambot early in my career, that was a huge blessing. He helped catapult me to the top real quick. And um, I'm really grateful for that. But it's just... Um, it's been a journey, man. It's been a journey of highs and lows, you know, smiles and cries. There's, there's been a lot, but it's overall, it's been a, it's been a learning process and a growing process. And ultimately I'm sitting right here right now with you and, mm -hmm. you know, I have done something right if I'm here. Incre yeah. Well, man, I, I've been very uh, honored to witness a lot of what you said. Ever then prior to, to the, to the bodybuilding start, no. So this is kind of a new thing for me to learn too. I, and, and what I'm hearing is that you excel or want to excel at everything you want to do in life, right? You want to be the best or something. And when failure happens, it's tough yeah. because your mindset is so strong on, on being the best, even from the academic side of things. Um, and there's uh, so many different topics you touched on there and I, and I want to visit, revisit a couple of things, but I want to go back to, to, to what we're talking about, failure and the mentality of failure. Um, what would you? What have you done in the past when failure has happened? Is it? Is there anything that you've? Is that something that you've? Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. Uh, is that something that has really hit the brakes on you, and you've not been able to, you know, get through something? Or is that? Because listen, for, for what I'm getting at is this: a lot of the people who are highly driven, highly successful. Failure is, not, is an option. When it happens, there's two ways you can deal with it. It's either, holy fucking shit, I don't know what I'm going to do, or I hit the, the failure on the head and I work through this. Mm -hmm. Going back to that era, not the Jeremy you are right now, how would you deal with the failure? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious from what, what, what I went through that I didn't deal with it very well. Um, after losing my title in 2018, you know, I didn't have that high of expectations going into that Olympia. I went prepped for three and a half months after tearing my pec in 2018. Um, I think a lot of it was just, I think what ultimately led me to, to losing that Olympia was the distractions that I was going through and kind of the lifestyle that I took on going into my fourth Olympia. All that success, all the, um, you know, I was making a lot of money at the time and, you know, I had a lot of eyes on me and, I, it gave me a, a false sense of, I don't know what, what the words I'm looking for, um, entitlement. Mm. You know, I, I think I had a lot of entitlement walking around and um, a lot of arrogance that I felt. Um, and that's where I went wrong, especially after Olympia. You know, I kind of didn't feel like I needed Olympia anymore because I was doing so well on a financial side of things and business was going well and you know, I was like, I don't need to do this anymore. I'm over it. I'm past this. And, you know, when I left, when I lost the Olympia title, I was, you know, I had a plan to what I was going to do after that. Unfortunately, some of those plans unraveled. You know, I aligned myself with a lot of the wrong people towards the end of my career. Not a long, there's a few wrong people I, that I got very close to towards the end of my career that really took, I took a left turn, man. Like, honestly, I was, everything was going the way it needed to. And somebody, some specific came in my life and kind of just flipped some things upside down and it got my thinking really backwards. The people that really cared about me, that really, that I really should have trusted, you know, I kind of pushed them to the side and started listening to somebody else. And, you know, and I was having these people in my ear the whole time, like, hey, you know, you need to be careful of this guy. You need to make sure you're watching mm -hmm. your back. And I just trusted this individual so much with everything that I was doing because of the flashiness that it was coming, that he was bringing to the table. 
And um, it's I, easy, man. It's easy. I, I just saw something shiny and I ran after it. And, um, you know, ultimately, you know, that guy screwed me over really bad. And, you know, he, he sabotaged a lot for me. And in that same time, I sabotaged a lot of my personal relationships. You know, one of the biggest things, you know, I've, I've talked about it previously was my relationship with Hani. You know, Hani and I were like brothers, yeah. you know, through my career. And I owe Hani a lot for what he did for me. And to help me get to the point where I was at, and you know that's probably well, that's probably the, the the one biggest relationship that went south that I re, that I regret. Let's I don't I don't like to use the word regret because I feel you should only regret the mistakes you don't learn from. But I do honestly regret some of the things that the way our relationship went at the end because we had a lot of big plans. We built something really big together. You know, five six years together throughout my whole entire reign. You know, we we did a lot, and there was a lot to come after that, and it kind of um, just all came crumbling apart after Olympia based off some poor decisions on my behalf. And, you know, you live and you learn from those things, and um, but it's just a matter of being cautious and understanding and having self-awareness around you and also not allowing people to dictate the way you feel about yourself or dictate um, the way you... The way you Dictate your thoughts, man. I was, I was, I was pretty much being manipulated at some point. And that's my own, that's my own fault for being that naive, at the at the specific time, and um, yeah. So how did I deal with failure? You know, I went out and bought a Lamborghini. <laughs> I <laughs> remember that nice prob- car. Probably the worst financial decision I could have ever made. For you young guys out there, don't buy an exotic car until you <laughs> until you have some some actual real estate and some good investments. I tell you what, I could with the amount of money I spent on that Lamborghini in a year and a half to drive it five thousand miles, I could have probably had like four down payments on rental properties. I just tell you what, it was the worst financial decision, yeah. and uh, it was fun to drive. I remember when you bought that, it was a badass car, man. It's it, fucking beautiful. It was, it was awesome. It was but fun. then once you've done the Instagram photos, it's over with. Yeah, man. How many it, times can you post that? Exactly, then, right? and you know and. People didn't, at the time, people didn't want to see me have that. Like, it pissed yeah. people off, you know? Like, yeah. I just lost Olympia, so I go buy myself a Lamborghini. It just, it just, it was just, uh, it was my own way of pre- kind of, like, making myself feel better, making myself feel relevant still, so, uh, whatever it was. But immaturity, to, to say the least, you know, um, it was just a lifestyle I was living at the time. I was trying to be something that I wasn't. I think you, you've already knocked the nail on the head, though, Jeremy. You said it's the people you keep yourself around, right? Or the people you kind of found yourself being in. Um, I don't know who these guys are. Again, n- not that I have anything against these people, but um, with with the world you were living in right now, then, you kind of had some, I'd say you had some support, right? With Han, you mentioned Hani, right? Um, probably Hani wouldn't have said, hey, that's a, the best financial decision, I'm sure, at the time to, to go ahead yeah. and do that I, a couple I, I of years I was ago. Going the, I was doing the opposite of everything Hani was telling me to the last six yeah. months. Because you know better, right? It's no, kind of like, you, 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 yeah. you, you know better, and I can relate to things that you've said because I have been in very similar scenarios where I could have gone like that and I've pulled myself away. You know, listen, living in Vegas, a lot of distraction, especially when you've got titles and, you know, people want to be affiliated with you and it's probably more of an MO thing. They want to be around you before whatever reason, right? But then you know that, you know that no. But when you're you're in the peak of things and you're, you're riding that big fucking wave and everywhere you go, fans want to take pictures and there's friends around you that they have their own successes maybe not on the social media aspect of things but they love that that's what they gravitate into right but then when things start crumbling down they don't want to be around that they don't want to be they don't want to be around you when you need a friend they want to be around you when you know this friend of theirs is going to get invited to this place being asked to go here it's like oh hey can i come too i understand that man this is very tough and for all the fans that are watching this uh, and maybe cannot relate Listen, when you, you get an accolade, when you get, you know, uh, power, when you get some sort of respect aspect of things, it comes with a lot of pressure and it comes with a lot of responsibility to sometimes say no, you know, but it's very hard to say no when you have options of the, the shiny new, you know, new friend that's got this and get that it's like hey i want to i want you to come over here ah, i got i got a fucking train it's like ah i'll train tomorrow and then you start losing your edge you don't know though because you have already achieved something that they haven't or anybody else has so you can try to get away with you justify not go in the extra mile that what you know what got you there yeah um and i don't know if that's something that's you relating to when i'm saying this but 
um, you know, what got you to be the champion was your tenacious attitude, the poor man's mentality. It's like your heritage of coming from the Philippines, you know, the, the, the ancestry that's in your blood. That's what got you to become the champion. And then when you get it, you know, you have to stay hungry. Stay hungry. That's what I was right? going to say is the hunger, you know, like, and that's what, something I was talking to my wife about is, you know, even with me, I'm my comeback next year. You know, yes. I've been talking a lot about coming back. If I stay healthy, I plan to come back next year and compete again. And it was, you know, I haven't been on stage since 2018 and it'll be five years since I competed. And the biggest reason is that that hunger that wasn't there, that drive wasn't there. And, um, it's back. It's back. That's what you're saying. It's back. You know, I'm feeling again, especially having my athlete out here finishing Mm -hmm. the last three and a half weeks of Olympia prep, being out here, getting an Olympia. I had a lot. Yeah. You know, I had a lot of anxiety come. I told you yesterday, I had a lot of anxiety to come back out here. I haven't been to Olympia since 2019. And, um, I haven't seen a lot of people in the industry. You know, yeah. there's, there's, I've left, I know there's a lot of people that have a, a sour taste in their mouth about Jeremy Buendia and, you know, coming here and facing all that was uh, something that was making, making me pretty anxious. Not that I'm scared to do it, but it's, it's something that it's a little uncomfortable have to, to approach the situations, but it's something I know I need to do. And I know getting through this weekend is going to get me past that anxiousness and it's going to be able to free me from, from all that stuff so I can focus. And, you know, we spoke a little bit yesterday about anxiety and how that affects our performance and how we feel. And when I'm anxious and, you know, it kills my appetite, I can't eat. And if you can't eat, you can't grow. And that's kind of something I've been dealing with for the past three or four years is just the anxiety, you know, think my life has changed drastically in, in so many ways, you know, not just, um, you know, personally in the way I feel, the way I think, but, you know, from the business side of things, you know, I took a huge hit and, you know, I lost a lot, you know, when everything happened to me, you know, my reputation took a turn for the worst, you know, I went through that. And then right after that happened, we went right into lockdown with COVID. So like, it was just Bing, bang, two boom. bad years. And there was no, you know, just even my mindset during COVID wasn't very positive. I don't think a lot of people's mindsets were very positive during COVID, you know, and it, it didn't, that wasn't the wrong time for it to happen. Cause I didn't, wasn't able to get myself out of that hole. I just kind of, went into a deeper hole and during COVID it, the gyms were shut down yeah. I didn't know what the heck was going to go was going on we were starting our mornings off with Bloody Marys for the first three months of COVID you know <laughs> I wasn't working now I got down to 163 pounds Damn. you know I, I just wasn't taking care of myself mm. and um, it just it's one thing that led to another and it, it put me into a, a really bad spot and it wasn't until you know honestly it wasn't until after my daughter was here I was able to dig myself out of that and you know, my wife being pregnant and going through all that stuff, being at like my lowest point in my life, it was really hard because I had knew I had a daughter on the way and I was like beating myself up the whole time. Like you're a piece of shit. Like, what are you, what are you doing? You know, not only just telling myself that I'm hearing it every day on social media, I'm waking up to messages or comments or a YouTube video about me. And just, mm-hmm. you know, I, I started hearing you're a piece of shit. You're this, you're that over and over and over again to the point where I started to believe it. Yeah. You know, I got to a point in my life where like, I was like, you are worthless. You know, you are a piece of shit. You're never going to be great again. And especially when I looked at myself in the mirror, you know, I was a four time Mr. Olympia champion. I look at myself at 163 pounds. Don't look like I've worked out a day in my life. It's just like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? You're so much better than this. And to live a life subpar to what you're capable that that eats at me i might not eat at other people which it should if you're not living a life at your maximum potential it should eat at you it should bother you mm. but a lot of people doesn't a lot of people will, will can just get by for guys like you and i that you know have a drive to succeed and, and to be the best when you're living that subpar life like it affects you because you see and you know what your capabilities are and you're letting yourself down no question and it's you know letting yourself down that's 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 hard for that's hard to live with you know, I, I can't, I, going to bed at night knowing that you didn't give your best, it, it's, it's, um, it sucks. It sucks, and especially when you can't get yourself out of it. And you, can, would, you can lie very easily. You can, you you can, you can lie and smile yeah. through that, but you still have to face yourself in the mirror. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I, my daughter was here, you know, I, I, I woke up one morning, I was like, it's just, it's do or die, man. Like, you're, either you're going to be the step up and be a man and, and take on the responsibility and set a good example for my daughter and provide for my family, or you're going to crash and burn and you're going to lose it all. Mm-hmm. You know, if I would have kept doing what I would have done, my wife wouldn't stay with me. I wouldn't have been a good father. None of these things. And so that was like really the turning point. And it took a lot of self-reflection and to understand the, 
the past mistakes that I made and how to not make those mistakes in the future. And, um, you know, it comes down to tr- the way you treat people. I think a lot of it was I, I got away from, um, I didn't treat people well towards the end of my, my, my bodybuilding time as a champ, my reign as a champion. You know, um, I felt like um, that was one of the biggest things that, that was holding me back from succeeding was, you know, my interaction with people and the way I was perceiving myself to the world. Even, you know, I was talking a lot of shit on social media before, you know, <laughs> leading up, throwing my money in a lot of people's faces. And it's just it's stuff I would never do now, looking back. And honestly, I'm really embarrassed by a lot of things that I did do. Looking back, I can't even go back and watch old videos of myself because I'm just like, I cringe. It's like, God, how was I, how was I like that? Um, you know, and, and that's, that's, it's tough and to, to go back and see those videos. But knowing where I'm at now, you know, I had to go through that in order to be here. So I just think it's a testimony to where you are right now, yeah. the mentality you have right now in life to, to actually recognize where you are, what you've mm-hmm. gone through, and, and also <clears throat> to, to look at a, a younger version of yourself and go, man. I, I used to be this guy, but you know, you're not that guy anymore. So that's a big step, man, you know, and again, we're on this podcast. We're talking very openly and honestly, the Jeremy that I met when we were both t- touring the world, you would only give me the I best, would just, I would just the tell best you what you, I would tell you what you wanted to hear. You'd only give me yeah. the best <laughs> version of you. I'd say, Hey, how are you, bro? How was your trip in? You know, probably say I am fucking slept. That'd be the worst thing you'd say, right? Let's be honest. Yeah. And then we'd probably be like, hey, you going to the after party tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Juris just messaged me. Hey, you going to go to Phil's after party? I'm oh, like, uh, shit. if it was me three years ago. Probably, oh, yeah, shit. But. Well, I got my own after party. You can come to that instead. Is it, is it children friendly? Because my daughter's Oh, here. shit. I don't know if it's children friendly. <laughs> Mentality wise, maybe. But, um, but yeah, man. And that's another thing is being able to, you know, pass on my experience to the next generation. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, I was talking to. Raymond Ramon from Brazil, the classic physique guy. Yeah. Amazing physique. Think, um, Personally, he's he's honestly my favorite in the division. You know, Chris Bumstead's great. He's yeah. the champ. It's gonna be very hard to beat him. But Raymond's like right there. He's yeah, he's he he's gonna push Chris this year, and um, he's he's I, I met him for the first time here yesterday. Oh really? That was the first time we talked back and forth yeah, on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Same here and there. But um, you know, I was just telling him, you know, you know, the success is gonna come to you. You're gonna be the champ, and the way you are right now, the humble guy you are, how nice yeah. you are. You got to keep that because when the success comes, That's it, things are going to start changing, and you're, you know, you're gonna, your head's going to get a little bigger. But you got to mm-hmm. make sure you control that, yeah. Because you know, people are going to appreciate you a lot more, and you're just going to go a lot farther. I think humility is a tool that gets lost when you're when you're a champion. It it, it can, uh, it can stay remain and remain. I, I've done my you did, very you did best. a great job, man. You always kept staying level headed throughout it all. I also you had. Know, that's why a lot, I, a lot of people respect you. That's why I've looked up to you all these years because you always demonstrated what it was. You and Jay. I always use you guys as an example Appreciate because it. you guys are, have always been very authentic, very real. You, you just don't sugarcoat much. You guys tell it how it is, but you guys are respected by everybody. Like, there's, I've never heard anything bad about you. I've never heard anything bad about Jay. And that's pretty awesome that you guys have been involved in this industry so long and there's not much, any, nobody has anything bad to say about you guys. Thank you, bro. I can give you a couple of ex-girlfriends that fucking well, will say something. But. Yeah, I can, I can give you a couple of ex-girlfriends that have a lot to say about me. <laughs> oh, man, on the, on the girl side of things, uh, you know, um, wow, you, I know that you, back in the day, you were a man of uh, many girls and many, <laughs> man many, many, many. <laughs> I know that it, the oh, Jeremy man. today, obviously, uh, is is a much better, better version because got a fucking home bro yeah you got you got stability yeah, and i, I think I that great, i got an amazing wife yeah you, know? you got an amazing wife finding the right woman you know true it, it changes your world and, and you have somebody like that that understands you mm-hmm. back you and supports you and like even if i'm wrong my wife would have my back that's the thing it's like she she's 100 percent die mm-hmm. die hard for me and that's what you need in a relationship she'll tell me when i'm wrong but yeah. she'll back me up even if i am but again you've gone through a lot of stuff with her yeah. And she stayed loyal yeah. to the T. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you've obviously she, had your relationship issues and stuff like, like yeah. everybody else. Nobody's got a fucking, you know, the, the Instagram relationship, you know, regardless of who you are. And, and again, you're a superstar. You still go home. You still got to put put your fucking pants in the drawers, you know, and f- fold up your socks or whatever you do at your house. But uh, my wife obviously is, is fantastic to me. And as you know, like I, I, I live my life before her, you know, I done my thing. And then when I, I met her, I was like, okay. These other girls that are floating around, yeah. they gotta fuck it. I gotta out. focus now. Out, I gotta yeah. this, this, this. You if I lose I don't this even girl, put myself around the temptation anymore. No. You know, it's um, you can't. It's not. It's not worth it. You know, just you know, 
look at my wife and I look at my daughter. Those are my girls. So there's there's no reason to ever jeopardize that. There's nobody else out there that would is worth it. Yeah. Can ever replace them. It's just um, when you find that when you have that, you know, it's just it's something that you, you cherish and you value. It's your why, and that's why you've got this this burning desire now, and all the ducks are in a line, and all the you know the the, the boxes have been checked. And life is aligning itself for you to go back on stage. You found that passion again, whatever it is. And again, it, it, it could be the family. It could be, or maybe it's fucking everything, right? Maybe it's everything you have right now that you didn't have when you were the champ. Because listen, mate, it's a lonely fucking road. I, wa- I want to, to talk about that. Like, when you are the champ, you, you know, you have that. They said, you, let's just talk about the girls. You got the attention, right? It's shallow. It's there. It's calm. It's gone. You know, it's like, ah, nice to meet you. Goodbye. See you. Maybe never again. But, it's a lonely road to be on the road, uh, on the, uh, traveling around the world. You get this incredible attention from the fans, incredible attention, kind of the wrong attention as well, right? But then you have to sift through that, and you still have to be focused on your craft. You were able to do it four times, yeah, and 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 again reinvite your reinvent your desire for that title every single year because this men physique, fucking hell, bro, you are the face. And, and always will be the face for the launch in my eyes. Again, I know Mark was the first men's physique guy, but then you took the title to where it is right now. And I truly believe you were that, that like, uh, you know, the fucking, uh, the evolution of man, right? You took the men's physique title, you won. And when you retired, uh, sorry, when you, f- when you won your last, in, in four years later, three years later, the fourth title, it's a different fucking look. And I've said this, men's physique is bodybuilding. Men's physique and bodybuilding in shorts. You had a fucking pair of legs. You were a bodybuilder before you even got into the class. Just like I was thinking I was going to go open. Two, two or two came along. Beautiful. Found my fucking range until I outgrew the class. And for you, again, entry point for you was um, a different physique compared to the end. How, how was it for you being the champ? to evolve the sport and how much pressure was it for you every time you had to step on stage and chase that title every single year? There's a lot of pressure leading up, you know, but I think I fed off it a lot. I, I liked the attention. I liked, I liked having the eyes on me at the time. I liked, um, it was exciting. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. Um, the evolution of the, of the sport is, you know, is crazy for the physique division. You know, my first Olympia I won, I was 163 pounds. Jesus, really? Like the last Olympia I competed in, I was 183. <sighs> you know, my heaviest off season was like 190 back then. My off season right now is 210. I'm going to try to get to 220. You look incredible by that off season, bro. Thank you. Yeah, so it's just, it's, it's, it's completely evolved. And then, you know, Brandon won the, beat me in 2018. Ray won in 2019. Brandon back on top of the last two years. And, mm. you know, the vision's grown and grown and grown and for us physique guys like how are you supposed to really improve your physique without you know you can just get bigger there's not much you not much else you can do so that's the direction it's gone and you know it's 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 big the guys are big and seeing some of the athletes here they wouldn't even make classic physique weight cut off for what they would do. I mean, for me I don't think I'd make classic cut off at 181 it would be really hard for me to get down to that. What would be the I think 181 this i'm the same height as brion 181 brion gets to 181 holy shit he's like 230 in his off season yeah so men's physique is it's it's yeah, your class now they're, yeah they're they're big dudes and yeah. um you know but at the same time like my my client that i'm I have joven from the philippines he's we're like roughly the same height mm-hmm. he's only 175 pounds right now incredible I love but he that. looks like he's 200 pounds on stage <laughs> like he's gonna be able to hang with those guys so yeah. a lot of even physique's about shape and the aesthetics of the eye and how you look and i'm not too concerned with the weight you know it's just it's whoever looks the best on stage and i'm really interested to see how it turns out this year there's this is by far the best olympia i think that we've had in many years mm-hmm. and all across the board in all divisions and um, I'm just really excited to see the way the judges judge it because I've noticed kind of a shift in the judging for men's physique the past few months I've at some that. of the shows. Yeah. They've kind of gone away from the bigger guys and went back to more of the smaller aesthetic look. And maybe it was just that particular show or whoever judging that particular show, but we'll see this coming weekend with what they do. Well, the time this podcast without we'll know yeah. who, who, um, who yeah. would have won. So in your eyes right now, and um, obviously now we're going to be talking in the past, but 
who is your front runners to one look out for who's your dark horse and who is your top three guys I'm sure the same names might come up but I, yeah. I'm interested about your dark horse I honestly think my guy could be the dark horse beautiful Joven, Joven Sagabayin from the Philippines I've had a, I believe in this guy a lot and um we have very similar physiques. I think he's a more muscular version than me. Yeah. Um, his conditioning is better than mine. Mm -hmm. And I think he can shock a lot of people. There's a lot of really good young athletes, a lot of rookies that are coming into this men's physique Olympia that can shake it up. I agree. There's a handful of them. They got, um, there's so many, there's like 70 plus yeah, guys. If you name names, you're going to be offended. I, 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 don't, I don't know all the guys' names. Um, but there are a lot of rookies coming in that I think are going to crack that top 10. It's going to be a lot different. I think the top five is going to get mixed up a little bit this year. Yeah. I think you're going to see maybe one or two different faces in that. You know, Brandon obviously is a champ, and uh, I have him winning the show coming in. If he comes in on point, he's, a, he's, got, he's the guy to beat. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anybody right now coming in, unless Brandon comes in way off. That's the only way he's, he's going to lose if he comes in way off. If he comes in on point, he's going to be very hard to beat. Um, you got Aaron Banks, who's um, – the thing about Aaron is he's a much different physique than the rest of the guys in the top five. Kind okay. of the way the same situation that was the Raymond. They're tall. Okay. They're taller guys. Aaron's yeah. like six three. Holy shit, is he really? Yeah, he's six foot three. Rock. So when you compare him to the other top five guys, I mean, the tallest one I believe is Chiron in there, who's five ten or you know five eleven at, at best. He trains you at the gym. Yeah, and incredible he, physique. Great, he's huge. Great he's guy too. A lot of muscle on that guy's frame, mm. and I have him in my top three as well. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, Aaron. Chiron, Chiron's been on the top three the last what three years. Yeah, you know he's just he's he's. I don't see him going anywhere. Um, it's just going to be interesting with the way people show up, and it's going to be a toss True. up. It's whoever comes in dialed in that day. Let's see who else can I think of right now off the top of my head that I see coming in and being a dark horse. Um, there's this guy from I think New Zealand. His name's like Fabrizio. I think he was in here training yesterday. This guy's got some crazy shoulders on him. Yeah. But then again, I don't like. I personally really like his physique, but again, his shoulders might be out of proportion for the division. We'll see how he does. But I'm a, I'm a big fan of the way he looks. Yeah. You're, you're an athlete. You mentioned him, and I want to give him some flowers. <clears throat> um, I know you mentioned that you you've met him back in 2017. Yep. Um, and you've seen something in him that was like, wow, this this guy. Where was it that you said? I am now going to take this as my personal responsibility to make sure that you achieve everything in this world and more. And I am going to be that guy that kind of big brothers you. Was it 2017 you decided probably or was like, it as the years have grown on? It's probably 2018 when I made my trip back out there before Olympia. Got you. We, just, we had some, a, good, a good amount of time together. We trained together. We were able to bond a little bit. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's just somebody that I... I love him like a brother, man. He's a, he's a really good, humble dude. He's come from absolutely, like he's come from absolutely nothing. It was his story. Um, his parents left him at a, at a, as a young age. He ended up leaving, living with his grandparents growing up. He lived a you know a life of poverty as a, as a kid in the Philippines with very little. Um, his grandparents passed away, so he's mm. been pretty much left alone. You know, I'm not sure how many years ago his grandparents passed mm. away, but he doesn't have any family but a, but one brother wow. that he talks to every once in a while. Um, he's got a, his his wife and his child and another child on the way. Oh, good! But this guy, he's 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 given his all, and it's a different it's different for these guys that are coming from you know these third world countries like the Philippines and doing mm -hmm. the sport. First off, this sport's very expensive, yeah, very expensive. And when the average salary in the Philippines is two hundred fifty U.S. dollars per month, imagine trying to prep on that. And granted, he makes more money than that now that he's he's co online coaching and mm -hmm. doing stuff. He's providing for his family, but when he began, mm -hmm. he wasn't. You know, he wasn't making that money, so he had to scrounge together. I can't imagine people in the U.S. giving up, scrounging together money to do a bodybuilding show. They wouldn't, they don't have the passion or desire like that. They wouldn't give up those things. This guy, before um, one of his pro shows, he sold his motorcycle, his only way of transportation, to pay for his prep. Not only that, we were three days out, and he got his visa denied. So he oh. couldn't even compete in that bodybuilding show. Oh, my God. And that's happened three different occasions. Oh. So he's spent all this money, you know, money that he doesn't necessarily yeah. have to spend. He ta it takes away from him and his family to do this, mm -hmm. and um, to be denied to compete because you can't get your visa approved, at, and to get back up after that, and mm -hmm. to keep pushing, and after being denied multiple times in a row, he's like he's not giving up. And I got a lot of respect for him from that, and I believe that this guy is making the right choice and sacrificing what he's sacrificing right now. Mm -hmm. 
to have success in the future because things are going to start turning around from him. And I told him that coming out here is giving you a platform. Mm -hmm. You're on a worldwide platform not right now in the bodybuilding and fitness community, yeah. people from all over the world. He's in here in the California and people are <laughs> stopping him at the mall. Be like, Hey, you're Joven. I'm like, he's, no. like, he's like, what? I'm like, wow. people know you. People yeah. know who you are. And the Filipino community, bro, like it's Jeez. incredible how some support even here in the States, yeah. how many people have reached out to offer their help and their support. Like we had three different guys drop off like a rice cooker, an air fryer, um, you know, a bunch of stuff yesterday at the hotel room. Just, just taking care of. I, I'm gonna go make him some. We had a little secret weapon. We, we uh, <laughs> don't we have, have to tell. <laughs> tell me after. Uh, everybody knows. Everybody <laughs> yeah. knows about my adobo gains. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Adobo chicken is a is a, a, a staple Filipino dish. But it's also something I ate before every football game because mm -hmm. my dad has said it's going to give you extra <laughs> extra strength, <laughs> extra speed. So you eat yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And um, no, actually, before last show, I <clears> you know I carved, I ate him some adobo the night before, and his body pops Jesus. on it. It's, some, it's something the Filipino blood loves that adobo, and Damn. it just pops. So I'm actually going over to some Filipino guy's house on Thursday. I'm going to make my home beat my. Uh, Adobo in his kitchen. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Right now with this, you have to get it authentic as possible. I'm going to make it myself. Yeah. No way. Yeah, so I'm going to make it. I'm bring it over and I'll yeah. eat that Friday night before the show. Just, I mean, listen, man. It just goes to show th this new version of yourself, right? Th this, I wouldn't say this new version because it's not like I'm fucking changed. This, the, worked, the work has done its job and, and you're just turning into a incredible human being. You've got this guy right now at your house and, and you did yeah, mention that. You've been, here three and a half you've been looking after him. You've been, you know, again, you mentioned the, the financial aspect of things. So you've taken heed in this, you know, you do well in life. Bodybuilding as uh, the sport has opened up yeah. a lot of incredible doors for you. And now it's like, okay, listen, you come and stay with me, my wife and my child. And you said off air to me that your, your daughter has been staying in, in your room yeah. with, with you and your wife, yeah. and I know how that is, fucked in your face and <laughs> farts in the bed. Two hours, three hours of sleep max the past couple of weeks. Yeah, and then you're prepping this guy, and obviously I'm getting being up there with him, him too. I'm getting up every morning at 6 a.m. with him. We're doing our cardio. It's great, man. I do a cardio or stretching, come back home, I eat my meals with them. I'm, I'm eating more carbs, yeah. and I eat some in and out on the side, but it's all good, bro. I, I hung in there with him every workout, pushing yeah. through every workout. And then, man, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tell you what, it's been three and a half weeks. I haven't done this shit since 2000. Don't admit that to him, though. I, I After told the fact. him, man. I, like, I told him, I told him, like on Sunday, I'm like, bro, you got to go do cardio on your own. I got to oh catch up God. with sleep before I go to Vegas. Yeah, fuck. So, um, it's, I haven't done this in four years. So, getting yeah. up and pushing, I took two rest days in the past two and a half week, or three weeks. Yeah. You know, we've just been training and training and training, and you know, I've, my body's a little beat up, but it kind of, you know, brought me back to yep. what it's like and, you know, the, the excitement. And, you know, mm. I'm so pumped for him to compete this show. I, I feel like it. I'm doing it. I see it. I see it. You know, and even even yesterday, you know, it's been a, you know, traveling here. Just, it brought back a lot of old memories. Getting into Vegas, getting checked in the hotel, going to the grocery store, getting mm. all the shit that we need. Give me nerves, man. The flashback yeah, nerves. I had to go buy a microwave for the room yesterday. Waste $70 on a microwave. I got to throw away the end of the weekend. Fucking throw the three days later. I know. <laughs> fucking hell. Story of my life. Rice cookers, blenders. Joe Joe looked at me and goes, are you going to take that home with you? I'm like, no. He goes, that's $70, Kuya. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to eat. You want it? Yeah, I'm not going to eat cold chicken. He goes, that's $70, bro. You know I could buy with $70? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I went and got him a haircut uh, yeah. on Monday before we left. <laughs> My barber charged like $75, $100 bucks yeah. for a haircut. He was like, Jesus. I pay two dollars in the Philippines for haircut. <laughs> Fly that guy I'm into like, my yeah, house. Bro. <laughs> I'll fucking pay that. Yeah, it's amazing. And I met him yesterday, incredibly humble, Matt. And and I think that you got something special. Like in physique does its its own talking, right? But the mentality of of the foundation where he is right now, obviously he looks at you with fucking bright eyes, you know. You're his his big brother, you're you're his everything right now. And um, I could see the excitement. Even you mentioned something. He's like, you are so excited right now, Tim. And he was. You know, he was very hum but very appreciative of the fact that there was a lot of chaos going on when we met last night at the front. Obviously, I made sure that you and I had our time. But then behind us, it was like, you know, people waiting for photos of you, waiting for photos of me. Um, and he was just like, oh, so, you know, can I, don't, don't worry, can I, but I, I still want to, I was like, don't worry, bro, we got to take a picture. And, and this is like a memory for us. And this is yeah. something that I'm, I'm really you know, enjoying seeing you do and, and go through. And also, whether you know this or not, like you said, this is like subconsciously ticking these boxes for you, you know, for your next chapter. Yeah. And um, 
maybe it's been you know a number of years like you said since you went through the routine of not taking two days off it'll be five years jesus it's since long. i competed if i get let's say next year it'll be five years wow yeah so, i mean that's a long time to take off i don't think i mean has yeah. anybody 2018 was has anybody else been. taken that much time off and gotten back on olympia stage besides flex wheeler <laughs> flex wheeler you're right kevin leveroni kevin too. Body right. well, yeah never men's physique well never they, classic they came back in their 50s right yeah and I and obviously I don't know what I think that was more of a challenge themselves, not to challenge the title. Yeah, I had a good talk with Flex Wheeler yesterday. Yeah. I saw him in the lobby. Really, nice. uh, Flex has always been one of my idols, one of my favorite physiques of all time. Yeah. pretty much everybody's. But um, actually, for the first time, we've talked in passing yeah. briefly, but we actually had a co nice conversation yesterday, and you know, um, he just reassured me that you know. There's, there's a still a second part to everything. He's like, there's there's more to come for you. Does anybody that doesn't accept? You know your apology or whatever yeah. you, you know that you changed, and he was like, "Fuck him, man!" Because everybody's made yeah, mistakes in their him. life, and you don't need that. So as long as he was apologizing, something that stuck with me: apologizing isn't for that person; it's for you to, to get that off your chest and to put it out there for, to the world. That, it, and I, I was like, you know, that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, if, so if they want to accept it and they want to accept me back, then then amazing. If you don't, then I guess you know, we'll, in due time, maybe you will. Yeah, I think Flex is uh, a blueprint of of many uh storylines right you know he had incredible success again being around gold gym vanished during the 90s when arnold's films are going on there was a lot of attention a lot of distraction and even openly speaks about it i mean he's been on my podcast and we talked about a lot of stories that he's never spoken about there was a lot of tears you know i was like flexed out I'm like, you know, the older I get, I'm like, I'm being very tough on my life. And now with these external fucking walls are pulling down, I think it's my daughter. Yeah, make right. me turn it's into a fucking soft, right? softy yeah. or more empathetic. Yeah. Um, and I see a lot of very similar storylines with you and Flex, you know, different in, 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 in some regards, but then some similar storylines where you had a lot of success. You had a lot of people that came out of the woodworks to try and distract you with that success. A lot of MOs for other people more than you, right? Um, and then when something happens, shit, it's the fun, whatever that is, that circumstance happens in life. It's like when you needed somebody then to be like, hey, listen, I need a fucking shoulder to cry on. A lot of people weren't there. Um, and, and I do want to touch on this again, and I don't want to kind of, you know, home in too much on this, but you went through a very bad depression, you know, and, 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 um, and I know this because we've spoken about it. And I can attest to I, I've been through something myself. And it's very hard to, to recognize you're in it. Because you're the champ. You fucking don't get depressed. You know, you don't feel, you're not supposed to feel bad, but you do. You can't fight it. You, you, you kind of get up in the morning and you have this feeling and no matter if everybody's telling you online or offline or you've got friends around you that are telling you you're, you're a good person or you're, you're this and that, you will look at what you don't want to see and you'll fucking read it. And as you said earlier before, you start believing it, you start feeling it. And as much as you want to fight it, you can't. Um... And um, I didn't have any help. Um, I think my ego fucking didn't allow me to go and speak to anybody. Uh, and, you know, even my wife see me at one point in time. She's like, you need to speak to somebody. Because I think she was worried when I retired, I was going to go back into some sort of state. Yeah. Um, but I recognized, I recognized certain kind of attributes of what got me into the last one, you know. And I'm not a depressed person. But in this in this circumstance, I, 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 it was fucking hard for me because again, I, and again, I, I recognize this too. It's like at one point in time, my physique went down to nothing, you know, and I was just like, "Fuck, what, what is going on?" Like, and, and I couldn't train. That's the thing too. So my outlet was taken away. You know, yeah. I, I have, I'm a fucking redhead. I've got, you know, Welsh fucking Celtic blood running through my veins. I'm a naturally aggressive person. Um, and, uh, and that's what weights have been incredible for yeah. me, you know, and fighting and everything else has taken that. So that having that outlet, but when that outlet's taken away, you start internalizing things. And then this, when this starts getting affected, it, it's, it's a bad spot. Um, and um, I know that you battled hard, mate. I know that you went and had a lot of lost friends, a lot of relationships that you lost, but you know, you're recognizing, recognizing that right now. Um, um, can you take me back to them times? And, and again, I don't want to home, home in on them, but I think it's very important for the fans to know that you are somebody that has achieved greatness in our sport, right? You, you've been there. You've, you've hit the highest of the highs. You know what it's like to have your name called in first place. And you also know what it's like to 
pull you one foot out of the bed in the morning and be like, fuck, I want to fucking go back to bed. How do you get yeah. through that? I felt like that for a long time, man. I only felt like that for probably a little over a year, maybe a year and a half of uh, being very, very depressed. Um, you know, honestly, bringing God back into my life helped a lot. Bringing my spirituality back and developing a relationship with God and put my life back in perspective and understanding more of my purpose and where I should get my value from. And being able to value the things that are important and not put so much weight on the things that are materialistic is what's really going to help shape and put my life into perspective. And, you know, when I was going through my depression, I went through a lot of things, but at the same time, God blessed me with some of the greatest things in my life. Amen. And if I wouldn't have gone through those tough times, I wouldn't have been able to receive those blessings. And those blessings were, one, my wife, Two or one, my daughter, two, my wife, <laughs> whichever one, babe. They come together. <laughs> um, but also having the time to reflect and on, my, on myself and put my life in perspective and to take a step back and look at myself from the outside in. Mm. Um, I had a lot of time to do that. You know, when I was going through the time off, I was dealing with injuries as well, and it was really hard for me to train going to the gym and when you're training and you're just trying to figure out what's comfortable or how to work out when it's not painful, it's really frustrating mm. to, because back in the day I'd be able to go in and train and just go all out. Feel us. I would just let my mind go and enjoy my workout, <laughs> feel the pump. But every time I step in the gym now, like I got to figure out how to do it so it's not hurting me or I don't, my elbow, elbow's not bothering my shoulder, my back, all these things. Um, so I had a lot of time off from the gym and you know, Yes, it put me into a, a pretty deep depression, but, you know, it allowed me to reflect on a lot of things in my life and put perspective and, and allow me to start valuing the things that mattered. And once I was able to do that, I was able to start getting myself out of the hole. And, it, you know, I valued too much of the materialistic things in my life before and put a lot of weight on those. And I didn't value my family, you know, my friendships, my relationship with God, all of those things that are things that... You can't buy. Mm -hmm. Those are the most important things. And without that foundation, what the materialistic things don't really matter at all because you have nothing to share it with anybody, mm -hmm. you know. And it's it's no it's no fun to be successful and have a bunch of things. You're not if you're have, keep it all to yourself. You know, there's no joy in that. Yeah. And you know, the, the materialistic things to me, they don't they don't matter anymore either. Like I got a closet full of Louis Vuitton that I don't even wear anymore because I think it's stupid and a waste <laughs> of money. And I'm, you know, I've, Sucks, right? <laughs> dude, I've spent so much money at Louis Vuitton in 2017 and 18. I'm uh, saying another, another house payment I could have put down, but, um, it's just the, my perspective on everything is just, it's shifted, yeah. you know, like even comes down to my cars and stuff. Like I don't, I used to post my cars or flex on Instagram, all this stuff. And it's just like, I don't need to impress any of these people anymore. I don't want to impress any people anymore because it's, it's not me. It's not what I need to do. It's not why people are following me. Yeah. They don't follow me for my car. They follow me for what I've accomplished and the, the motivation that I provide for them and the inspiration I give them. And I wanted to get back to that. And by doing that, you know, I think things have turned around a lot. I'm able to help change a lot of lives. Like what I'm doing with my buddy Joven out here in the Philippines. I got two amateurs that are from uh, Asia that are here competing as well. Oh, damn. And, um, you know, I work with some guys in India and just helping these guys see the bigger picture and help them create success. And that feels good, man. Whenever you're, when I'm able to see somebody rise up, because yeah. I know what it feels like to, to rise up. And that's an amazing, incredible feeling. And to see them going through it, it makes you feel good to be able to have a part of that. Yeah. And again, you, you've done an incredible job, mate, of, of uh, well, I'm listening to you now and I'm like, fuck, bro, I'm fucking proud of you, mate. Thank you. You're in a great place mentally. You're in a great place in life. And as you said, you're blessed, right? It doesn't matter if it's now the, the mentioning of the materialistic stuff. I think that's just maybe a phase. That yep. uh, I, I've even gone through it, you know, but I didn't go through it the extreme because I think my circle of people weren't doing the exact same thing because, you know, if you're kind of around success and successful people and they're posting it too, it's just like you kind of become, not brainwashed, but it becomes the you're norm, a product right? of your environment. It becomes the norm. Yeah. And the norm isn't that, right? The norm is where we fucking came through, what we've gone through, what, you know, the upbringing that we've had, you know, the the 
the, the, the reason why your dad was running you up the hill at, at, you know, before school, every fucking day, before any season was there. That, that, is, that is you, right? And it seems like that's what now you're getting back to is the core root of what the drive was. And it wasn't because of you making money to buy this, so then you could flex, or you. Yeah, I'm only taking your words oh, yeah, to yeah, then, yeah. to then, sh- to show off uh, to the circle that you've got this and that. I think you've you've gone through that stage, you lived through that stage, and I think that's one of the most beautiful storylines right here. Right, is you've you've been there, you've done it, and now you're willing to be open and honest and transparent and tell the fans, it's like, hey, you're on the rise, you know. Don't do what I done. Yeah. Invest your money, mm-hmm. put it into into this, put it into that, and you've recognised that you know you've done foolish things. I recognise I do is foolish. That's why I fucking love having you know these uh, young up and coming guys who are on the verge of greatness. Like half that I've known now for the last couple of years, and but I, I don't have to tell him much at all because he already gets it. I think that's one of the reasons why I love him. You know, he's he's very humble, he's very driven, he's got investments in different businesses out of the sport as well as in the sport. So if he was to, God forbid, and I don't want to put this out there, but something happened, right? God forbid, he's uh, he's set. He's got other investments that are going on. And and that's one thing I also want to talk to you about is, um, and then we, and we'll, we'll wrap up the podcast in, in whatever else you want to say, but you have been a um, never afraid to, to be... Um, in, or invest into different things. You've been great at using your brand in the heat, heat of and the peak of everything you've done to put and grow other brands around you. What are you working on right now? If you, I don't know if yeah. there's anything you want to speak about or anything that you want to be exclusive on. I want to put any pressure on you, but I know you're always up to something because I'm always up and you work in silence until it's like, holy fucking shit. What the hell? When have you been doing this? So, Tell I, me about uh, all the businesses of old and all the way to now, mate. Oh, man, you've laid a great blueprint for what for what we do in our industry and honestly what you've done here at the Dragon's Lair is, is an absolute dream I think you're doing everything correct right now I think you're enjoying life a lot right now I am you know you're doing very well financially and you know that that's something that you know I've always wanted to do as well as open was is is open and right. so that's kind of been my plan the past few months I'm actually next week I find out if it's something that we're actually going to be able to do um hopefully by April I'll have my, a gym open in Northern California it's something smaller and get started yeah probably like 3,000 4,000 square feet to it's get nice going nice size Jeremy I need a, I need a spot to do my do my own thing. Where yeah. I'm at right now, there's a lot of commercial gyms. It's hard for me to to do all my online work, get content and stuff because they're very very strict about filming and whatnot. Yeah. But um, even doing a podcast and stuff like this, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of um, there's a lot of options that I, I can go mm-hmm. a lot of different routes I can go down to expand on you know my online market yeah. that I have and you know um, I feel that that's that's my direction right now. Uh, of course, getting back on stage next year will only fuel the brand, fuel the business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, getting back on top would be a dream to come back after five years and to be able to get that cross tally on my neck. Um, that's something I've always wanted to do and it's something I've always set out to do. You know, the division's changed a lot. The guys have gotten a lot better. And I understand that I have a, a big, steep mountain to climb next year to compete again with those guys. And I have a lot of improvements I need to make. Um, but I still have a year to do to go before mm-hmm. the next Olympia, and I think it's a lot of time for me to make those improvements that I need to be able to stand next to the guys, the best guys in the world again, and be, and be competitive. Um, you know, I did suffer a pec tear. You know, I have a big scar across my back, and what I've noticed, the more, mus- the more muscular I become, that scar on my back is becoming more prevalent. Really? Because back when I was winning, you know, the shows, I didn't have as much mass on my back, so my <clears> back was pretty flat. And you couldn't see the separation between the scar and the muscle, but now that my lower lats are getting thicker, my rhomboids are getting thicker, yeah. you can kind of see a little bit of a, a, a dip or a little bit of uh, how it's kind of concaved along my shoulder blade. What's the um, scar from? I had lung surgery when I was like 10 years old. My lung was operated on. You fucking serious? I had half my right lung taken out when I was 10. Yeah. G- Jeremy, you've got disc issues. You've got, yeah. uh, what do you mean, an operation in your lung? Yeah, they took out the top, top third of my right lung when I was 10. Jesus. So yeah, I've, is this I've, something you've talked about? Briefly, I mean, it's never really affected me that big in life, and didn't affect me on stage. And yeah, obviously. So I mean, I played football all my years, <clears> and <throat> it didn't really bother me. Um, but yeah, as I'm getting bigger, more muscular, I'm starting to notice there's like you can see it. Like I posted a back shot yeah. the other day on my Instagram, and you can see like the little dip in my back, and it's just because there's no, it's just scar tissue. There's no muscle tissue there. Yeah. So you know, it's like I'm gonna have to come with a flawless package in order to be you know, the top guys next year. I'm going to have to come in 
with the right amount of size, perfect conditioning. I got to adjust my posing to hide some of the flaws that I have. And, you know, there it's, the, you know, there's, there's, it's going to be a lot bit more difficult to get the title back than it was to me, for me to originally get it. There's, there's going to be a lot of pressure. There's a lot of expectations for me to be on that stage and what I'm supposed to look like. And, um, but do you think you put them expectations on yourself more than everybody else does? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. I expect a lot from myself. And, um, but as long as that, as your boy, and somebody's been there too, doesn't become the detriment to your your development, just recognize that. Yeah. Because there's nobody worse than us being our harshest critics, right? And we have, we're very blessed to have an incredible social platform. You know, you, your fucking social media is pff, stupid. Yeah, what still, is it right now? What's your Instagram? I got 3.6 million followers. Yeah. Still going strong, and I'm, I appreciate all my fans out there for, you know, the support. But for some, for some reason, my Instagram has been like, something's going on with my... Remember we talked about that last Bro, time? I still have it. 30, still same I have 30,000 followers every month. I have 29,000 unfollowers. Yeah, every day. Am like I pissing 29,000 fucking 10, people off? To, I don't know. I think it's because Donald Trump Jr. follows us. <laughs> we talked about that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I swear. I I have, Paige Hathaway follows Paige Hathaway, too, and Paige's Instagram has been doing the same thing, too. If no. anybody's uh, in your... I'm watching our, our works for Instagram. <laughs> That uh, as a uh, help for myself and Jeremy, hit us up in the comment section. We want the listen. This guy's he's got three points. Let's go to give some love to your boy. He's been stuck at one point nine million for fucking nearly two years. But that doesn't make any sense though, because like, you know you got the podcast. Or you got your reach is so huge. Like you, it should be growing, right? I've pissed somebody off. Maybe one of my ex girlfriends. I guess so. Right? <laughs> Shoot. But again, going back we, to what we, I was we saying. Elon to buy Instagram. Yes, right? come on, Elon. <laughs> and it's, I've got Tesla stocks. Fuck me. <laughs> um, but again, what I was saying is, mate, just don't be your hardest, cri harshest critic. And I know, listen, you're gonna you're gonna nod and be like, I'm still gonna be my hardest, yeah, harshest critic. Yeah. But recognize there's a difference between being productive mentally in terms of like, come on, you fucking lazy bastard. That I know the difference. Or being like, you know harsh in yourself where it's it's not a, it's not growth right and i think that what's going to separate you from the pack going into your next show is the the mentality that you've now got to life the mentality that you've you've gained through life and and what is going to be your biggest upset is not the athletes on stage it's going to be this yep. so just Stay focused. If you're having one of them fucking days or if you want to get away, come and hang with me for a week. And we can both mourn at each other I about how our fucking elbows, yeah. our elbows are bad and yeah. everything else. But one thing you'll get from me is, mate, which I love to do is um, I've been very blessed to be around some incredible athletes in every different sport. You know, as you know, UFC is my... My biggest fucking, that's the sport I love. Of course, rugby, before anybody bloody kills me. <laughs> rugby and MMA. Um, and being around these guys and these me the mentality that they have, you know, again, they're, they're getting get the shit kicked out of them from the amateur ranks. Then they turn pro, they're fucking injured. And then when they get to that top of the tree, that, like, top five, they're so beat up. Yeah. And then they're expected. Fans sit there and be like, you're expected to win. I put money in you. Or, you know, and then they're expected to walk, talk, and act off stage. So I know you know what I'm talking about. Because by the time that we got to them titles, we were fucked. Injuries, yep. mentally, physically, you know, we've taken, we've taken losses. We've lost friends. You know, all this subconsciously, and you mentioned anxiety. Um, and, and again, I, I, I do want to touch on this, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up in, 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 in this uh, podcast. But... The, the title and chasing the title, I think chasing the title for me was probably the funnest part of my life. Yeah. And when I won the title, it was like a solidification of like, fuck, I knew I could do this. Oh, fuck you to everybody who said I couldn't do it. And then when you've got it, you've got to reinvent your way. And I know you said that you put a lot of pressure on yourself too, but it comes with a lot of anxiety as well. And that anxiety I've spoken about, funny enough, with Gordon Ryan yesterday. And for everyone who does know who Gordon Ryan is, Gordon Ryan is one of the, is the best, the greatest of all time, and only 27 years old. It's incredible what he's already done. He's, been, he's, he's fought the best of the best in, in, in BJJ, in grappling. And um, him and I had so many similarities with gut issues and how 
anxiety and, and appetite was affected. And you mentioned, um, whether it was off the podcast or just now, it's like when you get anxiety, your whole appetite shuts down. And that was my biggest detriment. And that was something that I wish I learned. I wish I recognized. I didn't know I had anxiety. I, I really didn't. I just thought it was nerves. I felt this feeling. I was like, fuck, why am I nervous? I, I mean, I've got this gym, right? And I walk in this limpy weekend. I'm so at peace, bro. This would have stressed me the fuck out. You know, I would have been doing maybe one podcast, and then I'd be, I'll talk myself out to the rest. Um, I, I had a, a life-changing moment, which I'll tell you about later on. Um, but right now, I am at, in a great place mentally, physically. Um, and that anxiety that I had to face, again, I didn't realize I had it as bad. Um, and I know that you, you understand that, and I understand what you were saying too, and, and to go through that, I mentioned Gordon Ryan yesterday, and go through what he's doing and, and a 70% version, and he still achieved greatness, and for you to go through all the anxiety, put a brave face on, go through all the troubles, and then kind of, and I, and I understand, I feel like I understand you a little bit more, because for me, if I get, can't get understood, I get verbal. And you do it to the wrong people. You don't do it to your fans. Yeah. You do it to the people who truly give a fuck about you, right? Um, and the anxiety and everything else that you went through, um, do you think that we ever seen the best version of Jeremy back then? No, no, absolutely not. I'm, I'm a better man than I was before all around. Yeah. You know, Physique-wise, I'm going to be bigger and better than I was previously. Um, mentally, socially, I think I'm, I'm, I'm more than ready now. Yeah. to take this on before you know i was still trying to figure myself out trying to figure out my role trying to figure out who i was and uh i put on different faces of who i thought i was supposed to be growing up you know yeah. especially when i was the champion i was still trying to figure things out you guys can see like my the style of clothing that i wore changed everything you know i just i wasn't sure kind of where i fit in or who i was and but now that i'm 32 now i got a family but that's what that's what matters. The opinions of others don't really matter as much to me anymore. It does to a certain degree, but not to the way it's going to affect the way I look at myself or the way I'm going to act. Mm -hmm. I, I know who I am now. I know what I bring to the table, and I know I know my role. Yeah. And um, going forward in the industry, being a productive ambassador to the sport, I'm not going to make the same mistakes I did before because I know I'm aware of them. I know what I can and can't say. I know what I should and shouldn't say. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that I have a lot to offer still to the sport and the industry as well as the up-and-coming athletes and to the fans. Uh, just being here the past, you know, we've been only been in here for like less than 24 hours mm -hmm. and having the, the amount of athletes, the young amateur athletes come up to me and tell me, hey, you're the reason why I started bodybuilding. You're the reason why I'm here right now. Yeah. And these are guys from all over the world. It just it shows that, you know, I did do something productive. I did have an impact, and I'm still impacting these guys in certain ways. And for the guys that everybody goes through highs and lows in their lives, and for people to see me come out of this on top of it and make something better of myself, you know, I, I just hope that transpires into somebody else taking on that same mentality that when they're in a low point in their life, when they feel like giving up, when they feel like everything's crashing down on them, when they see no light at the end of the road, that they're going to be able to look at me and be like, yo, Jeremy went through this, and look where he's at right now. You know, I want people to, to feel that. I want people to see that, and I want people to utilize that because, you know, depression and mental health, is it's huge, and a lot of people don't even, aren't even aware that, they, that they're going through it. And they think that, you know, they're alone or it's their, their feelings aren't validated or whatnot, and they are. Everybody goes through certain shit in their life, but you got to be able to understand it and be able to navigate through it in a, in a pr productive, healthy way and uh, learn from it. And that's the biggest thing is, you know, you can't, you, if you get brought down, you can't stay there. You got to be able to get up and battle and fight for the life that you want. And when you're in a depressed state like that, it, you have to fight. Because if you just roll over and go back to bed, it's not going to get any better. you got to get up and put yourself through the motions, get yourself back into a routine, force yourself back into a productive life, and then gradually things will start, to, will start to come back around because you're making the right steps to better yourself. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is when they, they get down, they don't make the right decisions to help bring themselves back up. They kind of just let everything start crumbling down on them. They let things slide, and they put them into a deeper and darker hole. 
So if you guys are ever in, your, in a situation like that and you guys are feeling down, it's like get your ass up, get to work, battle through, even doing the things. You're not going to want to do anything at that point in time, but you got to force yourself. And in a matter of a couple of weeks of forcing yourself, you start building new habits again, and you're going to get back on your feet. And that's what I did. You know, it, just, it's, it's, it was steady. It didn't happen overnight. It took weeks, took months. I'm still growing right now, still getting better and better. And, you know, it, it's, it's a process, an ever-ending process, I feel. We're always growing. We're always evolving. We're always changing. And if you're not, then you're going to get left behind. Yeah. And you're going to get stuck. And, you know, it's just it's not a place that anybody wants to be. We should always be striving for growth and striving to evolve for the better. And, you know, I just hope that my story and my situation that I've gone through is going to be able to help somebody else in, in the near future to help get them out of the hole that they're in. No question, mate. And the fact that you're doing this podcast and being open and honest and transparent is, is, uh, is massive, you know. There's a, there's a lot of fans that, um, that you have, hardcore fans, I'm sure, that didn't even know that you've gone through this. You know, may have or may not, but they sure do uh, know. And you, um, again, just speaking uh, in, in full transparency and, and, and with an open heart and rectifying and realizing changes that have happened in your life and new goals have been set. And also something to add to that too is, it, it, you know, mentioning goals, right? Goals need to be set when you're feeling low, you know, and you feel like nothing's going on. You should have the goal. Your goal should be, hey, I'm going to the gym today, right? Uh, my goal then would be, okay, I'm going to go to the gym again tomorrow. I'm going to eat a lot better than I did the day before. And that is the start, right? Obviously, this is a, it's a multiple and various different ways of, of being in a, in a slump. But um, I can recognize what you're saying because I have been there too. And um, no matter what I've achieved... No matter what's in the bank account, no matter what I'm driving, no matter the fucking house I'm living, no matter what is in my house. Yeah. I mean, shit, you're there, you're in a place where it's just like you're kicking rocks. And um, Everybody, you comparing yourself to others too. That's yeah, thing. that's I, it. I was comparing myself to everybody, you know, for a, uh, for a long time, especially when I went down the dumps, you know, I started losing a lot of things and I'm looking at other guys that kind of moved up to the position that I was in, yeah. you know, uh, seeing their success and like, man, I should... I was there. I should yeah. be there. I should have been doing this. Why is he doing that? Yeah. You know, I got stuck in that for a while and I, I wasn't focusing on myself. I was focusing on other success and why am I not there? And if you're focusing on somebody else. How are you going to be able to get yourself to that level if you're putting your energy somewhere that's not in you? Yeah. So, you know, that's the past, the past year that I've been able to, you know, get myself back to a point where I'm on my feet, moving in the right direction again has been refocusing my own eyes on myself yeah. and um, figuring out how I can get myself back to a spot that I can be proud of. I see it, man. I see it. And I, I also, uh, I have, I take my hat off to you, tip my hat um, to the fact that, you know, you got kicked down when you were down too, a lot. Yeah. And, and you were able to, you know, fight through that. But not the Jeremy style of fuck you, yeah. you know, I want to fight you, whatever it would be, you know. It was like... Yeah. You, you work through the silence, you work through the hardship. And as you said, you work through it with a, with a smile. You never um, got online and started battling or anything like that, which I think, you know, the old Jeremy, you know, the old Jeremy yeah. would have been like, all right, I ain't fucking, yeah. uh, you know. It's funny because I see people like, oh, you haven't changed at all. I'm like, ah, I, I kind of have because you saw that video yeah. put about me last, last week. I probably would have said something before. <laughs> I'm just letting that one go. So, yeah, <laughs> but you again, man. I see the change, and this is not something you can front. Yeah. It's just actions, right? I could just sit back and watch, and I see it. Yeah. You know, people can talk a good talk. You know, and and you, you know, we've been able to do it even when you were bad, right? You talked a good talk just so you can stay the persona that everyone wanted you to see, whether they liked it or not. But no, I think this is the the real Jeremy, meaning that you're in a incredible beautiful spot in life you know what you want you've got high goals high dreams business is going you've got a lot of things that you want more boxes to tick in business and stuff so for me to you bro i'm fucking proud of you um always being you know a big fan of what you've done you know on stage and off i love the tenacious attitude and obviously i know the storyline of where you've come from to where you are now but what i didn't know was what are more so the hardships 
that you've gone through. Again, I didn't realize that you had all these other injuries that you've gone through. And again, I think that's that's a testimony to you and why you you are the champion. And nobody needs to fucking ever doubt you because long before you even stepped on stage, you had career threatening injuries, mm-hmm. and then you decided to get in a sport that is aesthetically judged. And uh, you know, for me, I nearly lost my arm. I got a fucking pinned in my arm, and nearly lost my. I nearly had my arm amputated at 15. That was my pinnacle turn for me. And you've got your pinnacle turn for you. And now you're in a spot in life where you're gonna get back on stage next year. Yeah. You, you've seen, uh, you've seen what the Olympia has for you, love wise. The fans have for you, love wise. And this is just continued momentum now into the new mindset of of where you're going in life. And uh, Congratulations on the family, success of everything that's going on, other things that you told me off the podcast too. I'm very proud of you. And uh, again, thanks for the transparency, brother. I knew that that, uh, we'd have a great conversation at one point in time. We spoke about this for a minute, and I appreciate you coming into town and telling me. It's like, hey, let's do this. I I love it, I appreciate you too, man. You've been nothing but good to me since the first time I met you, man. And, you know, um, even having this podcast giving guys like me and other guys around opportunity to come out here and talk to to our fans and give us this platform we really appreciate yeah, and um like i told you i texted yesterday everybody's got the utmost respect for you flex yeah, and uh, you deserve that you know you've done a great job of being the champion what you're doing after your career as well and it's admirable and the hospitality you're giving these <laughs> athletes here like these guys don't recognize how great how fortunate they are because a lot of these other gyms they aren't opening their doors like this to the to them and it's tough. I was coming out here nervous where I was going to get my, take my guy to train. Yeah. Take him to Dragon's Lair. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and as I see, when I seen you trying to sneak in my gym, I was like, where the fuck are you yeah. going? <laughs> Give me a hug, you fucker. But I um, appreciate you, bro. Thanks for the kind words, mate. And um, I'm only being me. And uh, as life has changed now for me, I'm changing in my own ways too, in a, in a, in a better perspective. I, I'm kind of not as judgy as I used to be on myself. And um, it feels a lot better, mate. So... It's new, new paths, new lives, new, new. I said, new goals, new dreams, and I'm excited for the future because that one thing I always say to everybody, and whether you viewed it or not, um, you know, you have that that mentality to prove everybody right, or everybody wrong. Yeah. Fucking tell you you can't do it, and somebody's gonna fucking do it, and that's Jeremy Bandia, man. It's a full time. Just give me my fuel. Tell, tell me I can't give me. It's just more fuel. More fuel yeah, to the fire, man. Absolutely. And. Um, I think, listen, we, uh, there's nothing more that can be said that this guy is on the hunt. In a year's time, he will be standing on that Olympia stage. This is nothing but motivation for him to see what is up there, what is next to, or what is going to be stood next to. And these guys also, you remember too, they're looking at what the fuck you're bringing to And that's a scary fucking thing. My man, Jeremy Bandia, four-time Mr. Olympia champion. Thank you, guys. Straight out there. Out.